What the hell is up, YouTube? It's Dave. And Jacob. Here with the AMD shackles finally off and now allowed to divulge performance numbers for the new high-end Radeon 7 graphics card. Yes, the world's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU launched this week, taking aim at NVIDIA's RTX 2080. But has the Red Team's first enthusiast card in nearly two years closed the gap on Team GeForce? Or has AMD repeated the missteps of the first RX Vega 64 release? Well, the good news is that AMD's Radeon 7 really can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the similarly priced second-tier NVIDIA Turing card. The promises made at CES by AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su have mostly been confirmed by our independent testing. Mostly. Uh, yes, it's priced around the same as the RTX 2080 and on average performs at around the same level. Mostly. Stop it. You can't say that every time I reference the performance of these monster cards. My mummy always said there were no monsters, no real ones, but there are, aren't there? Yes, there are. Why do they tell little kids that? It's most of the time it's true. We've covered the Radeon 7 specs in a fair amount of detail in our preview and unboxing videos already, but just as a quick refresher, we'll run over them again here. The Vega 20 GPU at the heart of the Radeon 7 is the star of the show. It's the first time 7 nanometer graphics silicon has been used in a gaming card, and while it's 33% smaller than the Vega 10 chip used in the RX Vega 64, it has another 700 million transistors packed inside it. The full fat chip has 64 compute units and 4096 GCN cores, but the version dropped into the Radeon 7 is slightly cut down, so as not to cannibalize the sales of its expensive professional Radeon Instinct cards, which use effectively the same Vega 20 silicon. The Radeon 7 then has 60 CUs in it for a total of 3840 GCN cores. And again, so as not to cannibalize MI50 or MI60 Instinct sales, AMD has disabled a bunch of the compute accelerators and double precision processing. Yeah, but those are non-game related features, so don't worry too much about them. The 7 nanometer die shrink of the Vega architecture has allowed AMD to squeeze more of the same high bandwidth memory into the package, doubling its capacity from 8 gigabytes of HBM2 up to a heady and expensive, yes thank you, 16 gigabytes. That's probably overkill for most games, but as we move into 4K gaming territory, that huge amount of VRAM does seem to come into play. Mostly. The new efficient process node has also allowed AMD to hike up the GPU clocks too. Yes, the Radeon 7 ships with a boost clock of 1750 MHz, compared with the RX Vega 64's paltry 1546 MHz. And what of that 1800 MHz clock AMD initially marketed the card with? Well, that was the peak engine clock, and only likely to be seen in a few professional applications, and not in games. In fact, our card spent most of its time running at around 1710 MHz. While we can definitely say the Radeon 7 is the fastest gaming GPU AMD has ever shipped, and that it has honestly produced a genuine high-end alternative to the Nvidia hegemony, the actual frame rate performance of the new card is rather schizophrenic. Yes, precious. We can have gaming performance that totally beats the RTX 2080 in this Battlefield 5's we are 25% faster than Nvidia's stupid Hobbit card. No, we cannot beat it! Assassin's Creed at 1080p Radeon results are 46% slower! You made me sick. But the point is true, there is a huge variance between the performance of the RTX 2080 and the Radeon 7. It's only really Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Deus Ex Mankind Divided where there is any sort of parity. With the rest of our benchmarking suite, it flips between being faster or much slower. Overall though, the Radeon 7 is competitive with the RTX 2080 at traditional rasterized rendering. And that's all AMD was promising for this release. In our testing suite, it maybe falls a little on the side of Nvidia, but the winds go back and forth a lot. But comparing it purely to the RTX 2080 glosses over the fact that when we just take standard rendering into account, the Radeon 7 displays the same tip-for-tap performance against the aging GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, we castigated the RTX 2080 at launch for only offering performance a hair above the GTX 1080 Ti, but for the same price. But the 2080 at least has the promise of a future where the performance enhancing DLSS feature, the advanced Turing shaders, and real-time ray tracing will actually make a difference. With the Radeon 7, however, it's very much a case of what you see is what you get. For gaming, it's a pure strain rasterized rendering card, whatever you might want to say about Radeon rays, Radeon rays, the 7 nanometer GPU is essentially taking the Vega architecture as far as it can go. There will be no fine wine maturation here. The rapid pack math. Math. Yeah, the rapid pack math and high bandwidth cache controller, two of the big new features of the Vega GPU of old, are unlikely to find their way into many more games 
and offer future performance enhancements. Gaming performance isn't the only metric, however, and outside of frame rates, the Radeon 7 can still stand up against Nvidia's top cards. Yeah, the good looking cooler design is able to keep the chip impressively chilled. Throughout our testing, we were reading 74 degrees as a peak reported GPU temperature via Wattman, and it draws around the same amount of peak platform power as the RTX 2082. But the Turing Shroud is definitely quieter than the Radeon 7s, which has to run frustratingly loud to keep the temperatures that low, and that's when dealing with a GPU built on the smallest, most efficient production node around. So where do we stand on the Radeon 7? I'd, I'd just like, it's on the back, it's like it's quite sturdy, like a robust, really sturdy. robust design. I like that. That sounds really not sturdy. No, it doesn't. But it is undoubtedly a beautiful looking graphics card with its gleaming aluminium shroud. Yeah, those fans do look a little bit bargain basement though. Yeah, true. But it has the gaming performance that AMD needed to prove, and that's quite a feat given that we're essentially just talking about a die shrink of the Vega 10 GPU with a chunk more memory. Yeah, I don't think either of us really thought that would be enough to close the gap on Nvidia's high-end GPUs. It is then a genuine high-end alternative to Nvidia's RTX 2080, but it also has the same problems. It's incredibly expensive for a card that can't claim to be the absolute fastest gaming GPU, and it's only really delivering the same level of gaming frame rates as we've seen in the two-year-old GTX 1080 Ti. That means it's taken AMD two years, a 7 nanometer die shrink, and a massively expensive 16 gigabytes of HBM2 to be able to take on the best of Nvidia's last generation of graphics cards. The Radeon 7 is a bit of a tough one. We like it, but we have the same issues with it as we do with Nvidia's RTX 2080. It seems on all counts, AMD and Nvidia are looking for some sort of parity, for good or for ill. But as a high-end gaming GPU, it certainly delivers and offers a genuine, honest alternative to Nvidia. And maybe that's enough. So thanks for watching. Remember all that YouTube-y stuff, like, subscribe, spells, etc. And check out PCGamesN.com for more PC gaming and hardware stuff. See you soon. Bye.